Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I'm Barbara. I'm so glad to be with you today. And today is all the things. We are in the tunnel. We're making some things happen. My husband's out here. Y'all, he finished the shelving. Took him, I don't know, 10 minutes. That is done and up. I'm gonna turn you around and let you see what it looks like. I might even have room to put one more. Um, but thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. We're gonna be doing our seeds starting for eight weeks before last frost date. I'll tell you about that. And we're gonna up pot some seedlings. We got a lot of stuff to do. I don't know what we all gonna get done on this video, but the list is long and the time is shorter than the list. So let's get to it. Okay guys, here is the shelving that we ended up going with. I had talked about getting a wire shelf, but when we went to the store, this was a bit more practical. It was cheaper for one. Um, and this to me looks more, I don't know, industrial like the wire shelving you know, can be more home office like, but this was $75, which was $75 cheaper than a wire shelf. So we went with it. Um, it has a weight capacity of up to like maybe a thousand. So it's pretty sturdy. He put it together in 10 minutes. So we are good to go. We may even get um, another one. We'll see if we have space. So he's clearing off the table there um, to move the tables down. And you and I are gonna be on this side of the tunnel. So if you're new here, welcome to my channel and thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you'll go ahead and hit the subscribe button now in faith because you are going to love what you're gonna to see today and all the videos that come after. But today is seed starting day. And so if you're new around here, we have been starting seeds every single week until it's time to plant them out. So right now, um, I live in Tennessee, which is in zone 7B, zone 7A, 7B. If you're in those zones, you are right on track with me. If you're not in those zones, you can still pay attention and figure out and get information about what you should be planting at eight weeks before your last frost date even though your last frost date may be sooner or more um, later than mine. So this is the video eight weeks before the last frost date. Our estimated last frost date in this area is April the 20th. So we are eight weeks before. So I'm gonna take you through what I'm starting at eight weeks before the last frost date. I also have a seed starting playlist that you can, um, that I'll link up here that you can reference. And in every week I have put those videos. So if you're wondering, what can I start at 10 weeks before last frost date? Um, eight days, excuse me, eight weeks before last frost date. Look at all those videos. I also have a video on seed starting supplies, how to get organized. If you're interested in seed starting, all that information is in there for you. And like I said, if you're in my zone, you can plant what I plant, do what I do, you know, if that fits what you need. And even if you're not in my zone, whatever is eight weeks before your last frost date, even if it's not today, it may be two weeks from now, you can still plant those same things when your time comes. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. We mostly are planting peppers and tomatoes and eggplant and then a couple of other things. I'll walk you through that. But first, always I show you the progress from the previous week. Because we're starting seeds together, I also want to just show you, okay, what has happened in the last seven days when I wasn't on camera. And so you can see the progress and what things should be looking like, can look like, and make sure that you're on the right track. So I'm going to insert that footage right here, and you're going to be able to see the progress of the seedlings that you and I did together just seven days ago, plus the weeks before. Okay, let's start with our first tray of peppers that we did just a week ago. It's been seven days. So here, this first row is a brocanta. You can see I have one germinated right there. There's another one there. Another one there. Moving on to the sprinter, which is the red. You see germination there. The one in beside it is the melena, which is the orange coming on down and I'll just let you see the whole tray. So we probably have at this point, at least 30% germination. These um, jalapenos, the Pantera, almost a hundred percent 
germination and they germinated within like five days. So these peppers are doing really, really well. Look at that, that's seven days in. These are jalapenos called the Pantera. They're already popping up. The Sweet Bonnet peppers haven't done anything. They usually take quite a bit. And then I have one patchwork, which is the peppers from row seven. And then the pimento peppers, which is a very brand new one for me. You see, I have some germination there. So first seven days looking good. This is the other tray we started last week. So again, these are seven days old. We did these at the nine weeks before frost date. Remember this top row is the new potting soil mix that I was trying. You can see that I do have germination as well as down here on the bottom, which is the old potting mix that I've been doing. So let's just say the new potting soil works. So I feel confident um, that it is good to go. So up here at the top is salad bowl mix. I have some here and I have some here. Now I have better germination down here that could be seed or it could be soil. But at this point, I mean, I think we're still to the good. And then you can see the lemon balm that we did is already germinated, which is encouraging. I've never done lemon balm before. And then look, I have a calendula. That's just seven days ago that we did. Now, these, this I did off camera. So I did these on Wednesday. So it's been four days ago. This is German chamomile. I've never, ever done chamomile before, but it germinated within like two days. I thought I was seeing things, but as you can see, it's definitely there. And then these here I did off camera. These are dahlias, the flower from seeds my first time doing that and out of six i have two that have germinated so far but they're only four days in so that is encouraging as well okay guys so you saw the footage of how the seedlings are progressing i think overall we are doing good i feel excellent about the germination rate for my peppers now remember peppers can take up to 14 days we're blessed over here <laughs> because they germinated a lot of them within five days and we're seven days in and more popped up last night. But I'm probably at 50, maybe 30 to 40 percent germination on that tray that you saw. And so um, I'll give it another week and I guarantee you, <clears throat> excuse me, the majority of the tray will be filled full by this time next week. So if your peppers have not germinated in five days, remember, it's not supposed to. It takes seven to 14 days. Now, remember with your peppers they need to be on a heat mat to germinate faster. So mine have been on a heat mat and they also had a humidity dome in there. One of the things that I want to mention is that, again, if you can get a high quality humidity dome, the humidity dome I have is from Bootstrap Farmer and it has holes at the top that you can close and open. So that way you can let air vent through or you can totally close it. Now, when I first put them on the first two days, I had the vents totally closed. Let me see if I can find a humidity dome in here that I can show you. Okay, here's what a humidity dome looks like. I'm gonna put this over my um, plants because I'd have tomatoes and peppers and you want the heat. Um, you want them on a heat mat, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants on a heat mat with a humidity dome to trap in the moisture. But this is what I was telling you. This is from Bootstrap Farmer. Again, I'm still a Bootstrap Farmer girl, um, but you can see that they have these little dials here, right? You can open it to where the holes are open like that. And there's one on each side. Or you can close it like that. Or you can have them partially open. So this will go on top of my trays when they go in the house. If your humidity dome does not have the things at the top with that you can control and regulate opening the holes be very careful that you don't leave your humidity dome on there at number one too long or make sure that you're paying attention to your soil so i did mine for the first 48 hours because i wanted to trap heat and moisture in there when i took the top off and checked it on the second day i could see 
it's not mold but it's like a little white it looks fuzzy like mold but it's not mold i can't remember the name of it but anyway you'll see that on there and you can and which is fine but you can see that okay it has a lot of moisture so then i opened the holes and that went away okay so i kept it on the heat mat with the humidity dome on it and then i took it off at day six when i had about 30 percent of them germinating um I took the humidity dome off and I removed it off the heat mat. That's just because once they start germinating, they don't need to be on the heat mat and they don't need the humidity dome on there. If it gets too moist at that stage, then it can do what I call damping off, which means your seedling is gonna die at the root level. So again, you have to be on top of it and paying attention to your pepper seeds. Now, if you do not have a heat mat, will your seeds still germinate? Yes, they will. You don't have to have a heat mat. A heat mat just speeds up the process, right? It's kind of like if you're driving a car. Will a Pinto get you to where you need to go? Yes, but a BMW gonna get you there faster. Same thing. Heat mat is your BMW. The Pinto is no heat mat. You still gonna get where you need to go. You just get there maybe a couple of days later. Okay, so germination is going fine. So mostly today we are doing peppers. We're doing some tomatoes. I'm doing eggplant and I'm doing um, some tomatillas. That's the gist of what we're doing. I'll kind of walk you through once we get it all done, but that's basically what we're doing at eight weeks in. A couple other things that you can do at eight weeks in, if you like Swiss chard, this is the time to be doing your Swiss chard. I've decided I'm not doing Swiss chard this year. I don't, I've grown it, it's very beautiful. And I thought about just dedicating some space and doing a few plants because I like the, the color, the rainbow lights, and I thought maybe some customers might want to buy it. But I'm just not investing the time or the space for Swiss chard this year. We, we might come back to it again later, but not this year. Um, I've tried it. I tasted it. I did all the things y'all told me, and it tastes like earth. And I, <laughs> my husband's laughing. It tastes like earth. And although we're from the earth, I don't want to taste like the earth. So I'm good on my Swiss chard. So that's not going to be in my garden. But if you love it, put it in your garden. Okay, so that's something that you can be doing around this time. Let me see if there's anything else on my list. Because y'all know, your girl got a list. And if you've been watching me, you already know. Uh, let's see. If you want to do like some sage. Well, and some of the stuff that we did last week, you could be doing this week. So last week we did sage. We did calendula. We did lemon balm. We did um, straw flower chamomile like all of that can be within this time frame of eight weeks before last frost date if you want to do some um lettuce mix you could do that all of that stuff is good to go now for me because i'm growing on a large scale i'm doing i did my peppers last week i did a certain set of peppers i'm doing another set of peppers this week and i'll probably be doing peppers again next week just because i'm doing so many and i'm spreading it out over three weeks and i'm also paying attention to what peppers are going to go in the tunnel versus what's going to go outside um the other thing i'm thinking about is remember if you have spaces that you currently have onion and garlic in that's going to um be ready like in the june time frame don't forget about those beds that you can reuse and put something else in there right you may not start it now you may start it three or four weeks from now depending on you know your season and your frost dates and all that stuff so as we get started today i got a new product new pro why because i always got a new product so let me show you the sun is really really bright so i'm having to try to adjust so i apologize if the if the quality and clearness is not as good but the sun is like right in my face and this is where the table is it's the best i can do but let me see if i'm gonna grab the new tray and then i'm gonna go to another place and show you we are thankful for the sun we are not complaining but let me show you my new tray so this is from epic gardening y'all i don't know kevin kevin don't know me but kevin you got something going on you 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 doing the thing with these these trays y'all know i'm a bootstrap farmer girl I still love bootstrap, but on these smaller sale trays, Epic Gardening, they got bootstrap. I just got to say it. Bootstrap is still good, but these Epic Gardening, he just came out with a new tray, which is a 16 sale. Count them up. Six, four by four. So you can kind of see 
and I should have brought the 6L so you can kind of see the difference. But y'all, when I go back in there, I'll show you the difference. So you can see, again, it's smaller. It's almost like a little plug. And so eight of these fit on a 10 by 20 tray. Y'all, I thought I ordered 16 to do two trays, but I guess because probably, I don't know, probably because of the price and I just always buying stuff, I probably got one to try it out. I already know I need some more. First of all, these things, you can't bend it. You cannot, you cannot, it it has no give. It is sturdy as I don't know what. So it will, it's going to last you forever. These also can go on the top rack of your dishwasher. Point number two. Now, right now they only come in black. That's the merit number one. Because y'all know me. I want something cute. I want some colors. But we're going we gonna to rock with Kevin. I'm sure he's going to come out with some colors. If any of y'all know Kevin over at Epic Garden, somebody on my channel said y'all was his neighbor. I need you to go knock on Kevin's door and let him know that I heart these trays. Okay? Okay. So I'm trying this new for the first time. I've already been trying his six sale and I love that. And I need more of those. And again, a lot of it is I am constrained and I'm concerned about space because I'm starting so many plants. If space was not an issue, I would be using way more of my bootstrap farmer cups. But y'all, 32 in a tray versus when I get done today, this is going to be 128 plants on one tray. And what this allows me, it just buys me more time from a space perspective. But then also, if some of these don't germinate um, or, or, or whatever, then I can up pot the ones that do. And then again, condense back down to space again versus me starting it in a 32, not knowing if it's going to be viable, not knowing if it's going to germinate and all that jazz. So it just makes sense, especially if space is an issue. So we're going to use these today and see how we like them. But they're just like all those stuff. They're just smaller, right? So keep in mind, because I'm doing tomatoes and peppers in these, I'm doing a whole tray of tomatoes and peppers. And remember, both tomatoes and peppers like heat. So the whole tray is going to go on a heat mat. So that's why I have to be intentional that on this tray is tomatoes, peppers, or eggplant. Not lettuce, not kale, not anything that does not like heat. Okay? So, remember, these are small. So I'm, I'm, I know that I'm going to have to up pot. I'm probably going to have to up pot twice. If you're wondering what up pot is, that just means put it from one size pot to the next bigger size pot right i know that but it's worth it to me at this stage of the season to conserve on space it's worth it to me to see what germinates what looks good what's viable and up pot and go through that versus starting them already in big pots and i can't get it in my house but today on one tray we're gonna have 128 because it's 16 blocks times eight do the math 128 on one tray that's a game changer that is a game changer so that's where we're going to start start these in i'm going to fill these up with soil like we always do i'm going to moisten the soil i'm going to get my tags done and we're going to start our seeds and i'll tell you what i started and just like that we'll be one more week closer to having our plants in the ground so let me know what you are starting this week um, if you are eight weeks in, what you got going on, and we can compare notes, right? So I'm going to time lapse this part. I'm going to get everything ready, and then we're going to come back and talk about what we planted and why and go from there. Okay, y'all finally done i forget that the closer you get to planting and doing like the big things if you're doing a lot of it peppers and tomatoes it takes a lot longer to seed um i see automatic something in my future not this year maybe not next year but the amount of stuff i'm starting seeds with we're gonna need some automatic drop seeders and all that that's next on my list but your girl has seeded everything by hands i got the hands to prove it um, so I did two trays. So back here are the Epic Gardening trays that you saw me do. The 16, um, 16 sale trays. So I have eight of those and an eight, uh, excuse me, a 1020. So it's 128 plants. Um, on the back row, I have peppers, um, Ajvarsky, 
sprinter jalapenos two different kinds cayenne um and then on the back row on this first row is my first group of tomatoes this is the first week that i'm starting tomatoes and i'll be starting more tomatoes next week and the week after um and then i'll do another succession of tomatoes later on in the season but for this row it's rebelski which is a greenhouse tomato that i did last year that was very good um large red cherry dr witchy and amish paste so that's that tray there then i went ahead and i made some soil blocks here <coughs> I have one, two, three, four, five, six sets of 20. Um, I have two different kinds of eggplant. I have a black beauty and then a fairy tale that I'm doing. Um, and then I have a habanado and tomatilla. So I did little small versions of those. And then back here is peppers. I'm doing a new one, a golden cow wonder, a giant Marconi I've done before. And then what's this one? A orange cayenne pepper. And then these big blocks here is my new soil block. It's very similar to the one that I've done before, except the one I had before was five. This is four and the blocks are much bigger. You can see they're like two inches high. And these first four rows of 16, those are a, a French red marigold. I'm starting some marigolds. Typically marigolds are gonna be between um, six weeks, around six weeks before last frost date. I'm doing some early because I have a high tunnel. So don't feel like you're behind if you're doing marigolds and you haven't started. So marigolds are six weeks before. I'm just doing mine early because I have a high tunnel and because I'm gonna be doing a lot of them. And I was just really just trying out these big blocks. They're much bigger than what I anticipated. I normally would not do marigolds for that. But again, we're, we on this side, we just playing. Um, so I got 16 marigolds. I'll be doing way more of those because I do a lot of interplanting and companion planting with flowers. Marigolds are good for your tomato beds and all of that stuff. And so two years ago, I kept going to Home Depot buying these little flats of yellow marigolds. And I was like, and they're, you know, $1.98, but that starts to add up when you buy 20. So I'm like, I'll just grow my own. And so last year um, I grew some, I didn't have nearly enough. So I'm doing even more this year. Um, and then this very last row here is a pineapple tomato of four. So I just got to um, moisten these and then put vermiculite on it like I do on the back row. And y'all, I ain't going to say just like that because it really wouldn't just like that. But <laughs> within an hour, we have been able to start. That's at least 200, 200 seeds today for eight weeks before the last frost date. So I'm going to water this in cover of vermiculite and just like that we're one week closer let me also show you the shelf my husband has done it he's put some stuff up let me show you what that's looking like as, as well y'all look at the shelf it's full yep i think i could use another one if i wanted to so he put that stuff there so if i do get another one it'll come out just a little bit in the door but that's fine but it looks so much better i got some trays there pots he organized it. He just put the stuff up there and organized it for me. So that is fantastic. That table still has a lot of stuff on it. So we got to go through that. But that table is completely empty. So little bit by little bit, I'll just give you the... And remember, this is where I was on this side. So all of this now is very, very open. So y'all... Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, I had to concentrate. It was a lot of seeds. I had to concentrate. So I just had to time lapse a little bit. But you can see we got it done. And I hope that you're getting it done. And I want to encourage you because, y'all, I'm telling you, even as I was just doing that, I was like, man, are these seeds going to germinate? I felt like I was not rushing, but I didn't calculate in my mind how long it would take. And I am probably rushing because I got... Yeah, I'm rushing because <laughs> I got to go. I have an early morning um, flight. So I'm actually headed out of town like in a couple of hours um, at the time of this video. So I am rushing because I got 15 other things to do before I head to the airport. Um, so I was thinking, man, this is sloppy. I don't know if this is going to germinate. <sighs> Even after four years, I still be looking at those seedlings like, are you going to germinate? And you know what? They do germinate. Some of them don't. And that's okay. Because why? 
we got more seeds <laughs> or we can buy more seeds. So I want to encourage you because I'm sure I'm not the only one that sometimes I don't care how long you've been doing it. You're still thinking, but no, 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 for real. Is this really going to pop up? You know, and again, I'm not going to say that that's my best work, but it is some work. So we'll check in next week and see how the work was. Okay. So thank you so much for joining in. I hope that your gardens are doing well. I hope that you have an amazing week this week. I hope that you have beautiful sunshine wherever you are. Remember, gardening is a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.